<laughs> we concur. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's one of those things of, you know, who's at the table and who's able to express themselves um, in an authentic way about what's important. Um, I, I can't remember exactly the year it became um, like a publicly traded company, um, but I want to say by the 80s it was. And, um, and at that time, Ruth and Elliot were still there, um, board of directors, you know what you need in order to like move into that next echelon. But I will say I'm not like versed on the Mattel of things. It was just important for me to not make this a Mattel film. Like it's not a Mattel film. Um, and you know, I think it is about who's able to be at the table and who's able to authentically be able to say, this is what's important to me. And one of the themes that, you know, we discuss in the film is how, you know, Kitty saw a need built out um, uh, the diverse team at Mattel came together to help her bring this need to the forefront, right? And then we get to the roadblock of not having it, you know, marketed and maybe not um, in the stores. And so then we have Stacy who sees a need, builds a team um, and She's like, I want to make something the distributors can't say no to. So, you know, Kitty was able to kind of break through the marketing barrier with her Shawnee line. But then Stacy's like, oh man, I see that you can get to that point, but then we got to get it out there. The stores might not choose it. And so I, I took that same kind of like, let's build a team. And that's kind of how, how I wanted to end it. Like, let's build a team. Let's put Black Barbie on the timeline. And, you know, like I said, I don't know much about the Mattel and where it's at now. We have Mason in the film who kind of gives us an idea of where it's at now. And so I do think that that's the disconnect and not having an idea of this legacy story that they had. Honestly, I feel like they didn't have too much of a hand in. It just organically came to be in the sense of my aunt laying this beautiful groundwork kitty comes in she does her thing releases black barbie ventures thomas quinn and stacy mcbride irvy stacy has seen kitty like this is representation working like it's showing how it works how it's important oh it just spoke to me in a way and i don't think that there's people at Mattel who sees this as something that's rich and that they could tap into mm -hmm. and market in a way that's not performative when it comes to diversity, inclusion, and equity. We'll, we'll leave equity out for a minute because <laughs> we really need to talk about that part for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so to your, your question, I think it just, it, they don't have the team. And one thing about being invited to the table and being able to authentically speak what about what's important to you, um, but also having someone on the opposite side of the table who like hears you, sees you, and is able to step aside and say, well, you know what? I don't, I can't really relate to what you're saying to me, and I don't really see the importance right now, but I trust, and I want to step out with you on this. Let's go. Um, because we're all here, we saw this. Um, for a long time, I was just like, am I crazy? But this is something, right? This is, this is something that 
actually speaks to why representation matters. It feels like we're at a place where you can say it, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, so this shows what it means. Okay, we'll take two more questions. Okay, um, thank you for a brilliant movie. I really, really enjoyed your documentary. Um, so I had a Christy doll when I was a kid, and I loved her. She, like, she was mind-blowing. It never occurred to me that she was not Barbie. I just thought she was black Barbie doll. Until the Barbie movie this year, where they were like, hey Barbie, hey Barbie, hey Barbie. I was like, where's Christy, where's Christy? I was waiting for Christy. And so then I started doing some research and I was like, oh, Christy wasn't Barbie. So like literally this year, I just learned that. So this is mind blowing again. I wanna know, because I kept looking for Black Ken when I was a kid. So when was Black Ken born? I'm assuming he eventually came around. I had a black male doll, but I don't know if he was black king. So, did that come out? Yes, and at some point I did have those dates and knowledge in my brain space, but they've since, they're not there. Um, I know by day and night, um, Black Barbie, when she came out, Black Ken was there with her. Um, but also, again, when we're talking about the series, these are the stories um, that we're hoping to incorporate. And I know I have a few people on deck, like the um, model for Black Ken, um, whose name now is escaping me, um, is on a list somewhere that I'm like, if we're able to like really take off with this, then these are some of the stories um, that we can incorporate. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more. I think I heard it. Yes. Uh, I wanted to know how difficult it was to get funding to make this. Oh, Kelly? <laughs> the question was how difficult was it uh, to get funding to make this project? Funding, equity, we're going to talk about. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I, it's 10 years um, it took um, for the funding part of it. And a part of that, you know, it's just how documentary moves in the indie space of applying for grants, being hopeful. Um, and so that takes years. If you don't get it that year, then you reapply, you reapply until um, it makes sense and you're able to, to do that. And for as much as I don't really partake in socials, and it's not like a mainstream in my my world, um, it was in 2020. Um, with the all of 2020 that we are, I'm sure, very familiar with, um, that we did a week, again, a team of people reaching out to me because it wasn't on my radar to do, because I'm social media adverse. Um, we're like, what's going on with Black Barbie? Can't, well, we need to do something. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's give me some ideas. And they're like, let's do a social media push. And so again, with my version, I'm like three days. Motivation Monday, Woman Kush Wednesday, and Filmmaker Friday. Here's some assets, here's some language, we push it out. And from that point, um, I got a lot of requests studios, indie, and I chose the indie route. Um, and we were able to get our funding with um, Lindley Productions, um, Grace Lay and Sumali Montano, um, two women of color who were like, you tell your story. This story that you are wanting to tell is important. We believe in that. They didn't come in trying to tell me what my story was. Well, we would fund it if you decide to do it this way. Or, you know, they gave me the creative freedom to, to, to make this that you, you saw today. I love it. Y'all give a round of applause. Thank you guys so much. Oh, we actually, wait a minute.